Pedro Acosta looked anything but a rookie during MotoGP preseason testing, with the KTM rider especially strong in race trim. A Moto3 world champion as a rookie and Moto2 champion in just his second season, Acosta's rise to MotoGP has been extremely quick. At times feeling under pressure to perform, Acosta has looked very calm on a MotoGP bike. And Marquez, who became MotoGP champion as a rookie in 2013, expects Acosta to join the fight at the front. Pedro will be one of the guys this season, Marquez told MotoGP.com. He has everything to be a big name in MotoGP. Marquez wasn't the only rider to heap praise on Acosta, with Francesco Bagnaia and Alex Espargaro doing the same. He will fight for the top 10, for sure, added Bagnaia. It's too soon and he's too young to put pressure on him. Let's see him enjoy it. Espargaro said, obviously he will be one to watch this season. Acosta responded to the praise but said waiting to understand their potential is the first objective. Acosta told MotoGP.com, It's always nice to listen to these things, but we have to wait to see the reality and wait to see where we can be in a MotoGP weekend. The new format with the first QP on Friday, also with the qualifying and sprint race on Saturday is going to be a question mark. Anyway, we will try to be ready. The last three years I have been living with pressure every day. Imagine a guy that's 16 years old arriving at the factory KTM team to win. It's three years of his life focusing on just winning. For sure, there is pressure but I am managing better than my first season in Moto3. In Moto2 I got a lot of pressure from myself and it was my fault for putting all this pressure on myself. But it's better now and I just keep it down. After three MotoGP seasons with Ducati, Luca Marini will be aboard the RC213V as he begins the process of trying to bring Honda back to the front of the field. Honda's difficulties over the last few seasons have been well documented, but with Marini and Johan Zarco, LCR Honda, moving to the Japanese brand, new ideas could be just what Honda needs. Steps forward during preseason testing were made, while Honda expects to be fighting for podiums as the season wears on. But that's unlikely to be the case in Qatar with Marini more concerned about putting the finishing touches to his adaptation to the Honda. The time has come to go racing again, and now I get to do it as part of the Repsol Honda team, said Marini. It is another thrilling milestone in the journey I have been on since the end of last year. Every time we work together as a team we are able to find something and make more steps forward. This first weekend will give us the opportunity to finalize some details from the test and also understand better how to work during a race weekend together. We have work to do, and I am eager to start it as a factory Honda rider. For Joan Mir, 2024 signifies his second season with Honda and the 2020 world champion will have the task of leading their development. Speaking ahead of this weekend, Mir said, another season is finally here. Always you're excited to start the year and to get back racing because there is nothing like racing a MotoGP machine. We have had some good time between the test and this weekend to keep training and put everything in place to start the year. I am happy with how everything has been progressing and I am confident we can keep making improvements over the course of the Qatar GP. It will be a weekend of building and capitalizing on the important moments, our aim is to start stronger than we did last season to begin the year in a positive way. On the other hand, Marc Marquez dominates the spotlight heading into the 2024 MotoGP season. The season opener this weekend in Qatar is his race debut on a Ducati, after making the seismic decision to quit Honda. Marquez, at Grazini Ducati, will ride a GP23 this year while his factory Ducati and Pramac rivals step onto the updated 24 version. But can Marquez arrest the decline of the past couple of years? Our journalists make their big predictions for the eight-time world champion season. Peter McLaren, inside the top six fighting for the podium. Maybe on it. Robert Jones, Mark Marquez has been strong so far in testing and so challenging for the top five, or even a podium, does not appear to be out of the question. Jordan Moreland, if he finishes inside the top five or on the podium, it'll be the perfect start. The anti-clockwise tracks are his favorites. Marquez's record is second to none at Coda and Saxenring, so they are the obvious places to expect something special. Then there's Aragon, Phillip Island, Valencia, if Marquez wins races he can fight for the title, but then so can probably 7 to 8 others. Robert Jones, I'm predicting that Marquez will win a total of 8 races including sprints, with Coda, Argentina, Le Mans, Saxenring, Dürerum and Phillip Island the places he will enjoy the most success.
I think Mark will win eight races, probably more Grands Prix than sprints. The obvious circuits like Coda, Saxenring and Aragon are ones that Marquez has been so good at in the past. Of course he can win the title. He wants the ninth world championship. I think his only penalty last year was for the Miguel Oliveira collision at Portimo, a mistake he made from pushing the Honda too hard on the brakes. The Ducati should give him much more margin in battle than the Honda did. We also saw the more rational only take risks if I have a chance Marquez last season. But if a race win is on the cards, there's no doubt Marquez is not afraid to go on the attack. Especially since he hasn't won since 2021. The towing in practice and qualifying has irritated some riders in recent years. Marquez insisted it was due to the character of the Honda, which lacked speed on a time attack, and other RCVs did do the same. But we'll see if Marquez continues the tow seeking at Ducati. Fireworks will undoubtedly light up during the 2024 season for Marquez, as he will likely be contending for race wins against other Ducati riders more often than not. I believe Ducati will allow him to race fairly, although team orders will also come his way if he is not in contention for the title, something he might find hard to cope with given he has never encountered such scenarios before. It is inevitable that Mark will ruffle some feathers with the other Ducati riders, which is what MotoGP needs to be honest. But the fact he is on pretty much the same machinery, he will learn a lot from the other Ducati riders and personally I think for most of the season he will be very clever with them on track and battles. It'll be a big decision and interesting to see how long he takes to decide. The longer he holds out, the better he can judge the competitiveness of each bike and team, including his own Grazzini Ducati. But the longer he waits, the fewer options will be available. If he's fast in having fun at Grazzini, something he said was his main goal when leaving Honda, I wouldn't be shocked if he stays put. But if his top priority is to win a ninth title, his best chance will clearly be to join a factory team, either Ducati or KTM. If Marquez performs anywhere close to the level many expect in 2024, Ducati will want to keep him and I think that would mean a switch to either the factory team or the Prima Pramac Ducati outfit where he would be aboard the up-to-date machinery from the Bologna-based manufacturer. KTM could rival Ducati if they want to make a splash signing but Marquez remaining at Ducati is the most likely scenario. Hard to say, part of me thinks he will stay with Grazzini if it goes well and he is enjoying himself. It is the perfect team set up for him as it's family-orientated. But if Honda seems to be progressing with their bike for 2024, I could see Marquez going back to Honda for 2025.